Hey guys, this is Skyjin Hunter. The Capcom TGS Live 2020 show was absolutely amazing. They gave us roughly 22 minutes of live gameplay demo in the first half of the show, but once they transitioned to the second half, which was Japanese only, they ended up showing another 20 minutes of footage with tons of new stuff. I stuck around and did translation in the chat on Twitch, but here is the full presentation with my fan translations of what they're saying. Quick note before I jump in, a huge shout out to Gavin, the guy who was doing the interpretation for the majority of the Capcom event. He did an absolutely amazing job. I've been complaining about how most of these companies at TGS are not slowing down for interpreters to speak, and often these events don't need to be live. But Gavin came in and grabbed the bull by the horns. I can translate, but interpretation is a completely different skill set, so my utmost respect to those who can do it, especially those who could do it as well as Gavin. Now, without further ado, here is my translation of the event. Oh, they look so cool. Okay, so let's go in with the presentation. So this is going to be very similar to the previous uh, demo that we just did, but instead of bringing a Palico and a Palamute, in this one we're going to be bringing two Palamutes. So in this game it's really up to the player, you can go with two Palicos or two Palamutes, or you can mix it up and have one Palico and one Palamute, it's up to you. Ooh, they're so cute. Ooh, I want to ride on them. <laughs> hey, back when you were showing that, uh, did you notice that the Palamutes were looking in a specific direction? Can you show that again? Oh, I see. The Palamute is aware of the other Palamute and is watching what they do. Interesting. <laughs> ah, sorry, I completely forgot to mention it, but if you notice, this is the girl hunter. Maki said that she wanted to see this outfit, so here it is. Uh, let's go over somewhere where it's a little bit more bright. Ooh, what was that? That was really cool. I love how you're trying to show it off and the dog was blocking the view. <laughs> Those palamutes are really cute. Okay, let's go inside the tent here. Oh, look, there's an incense stick. No, I really like the outfit. It's very, seems very familiar, something that we might have seen in past games. I do notice that there's something around the neck that's really interesting. Yeah, that's supposed to be sort of like a hood. And on the back of the outfit, there's these lapels. It's kind of like having a scarf. So here in the camp, you have access to your item box. Uh, you also have access to the companion board. So if you want to swap out between Palamutes and Palicos, you can do that. Also, if you forgot to eat back when you were in the village, you can also eat while you're inside your camp. Same thing goes for the item box, so if you want to swap in some items for other items and stuff like that, you can do that. And while I can't show it here uh, in this demonstration, we do have an equipment box uh, and we'll have all 14 weapons, uh, so you'll be able to swap in between those as well. The Palamutes are really cute. Yeah, if you also notice, they're actually quite big. Yeah, we wanted to make sure to differentiate between them and the Palicos, so we decided to make them more of a larger size companion. If you notice on the bottom right hand side of the screen we have the traditional item slider where you can toggle between items. To the left of that we have a new feature called the action slider which you can use to do different commands to your companions like calling over your palamute so that you can ride on them. When you're on a palamute you can run completely freely, you can dash and you can even jump whenever you want. I just showed it off earlier, but you can use the jump function to actually get up on other objects as well. Wait, you can give it a snack? Oh look, it's giving you paw. 
Yeah, they're really cute. Uh, in this game, they're not specifically tied to any gameplay functions, but we have these types of features so that the player can interact with their companions. Yeah, and it's not really like a screen capture, uh, but you can have them uh, for taking pictures as well. Uh, my note, I actually have no idea what they're referring to. Oh, sorry, I forgot to introduce and show how the mechanics of the wire bug function, so let me go back and show you that. Yeah, so this is one of the main gameplay hooks for this title. So by utilizing these wire bugs, you can do a lot of new vertical type of action, uh, which is brand new to this series. Mm -hmm. So if you notice in the center bottom of the screen, there is a gauge, and that shows if you can use the wire bugs or not. And by using up those gauges, that's how you perform these actions. Yeah, so basically you're sending out the wire bug and then using its wire so that you can traverse and move to where it's at. Oh, and you can run up inclines as well. Yes, that's right. Oh, this rock is actually kind of shaped like a dog. Yeah, so in this game, for the most part, if you can see it, you can go to it. So all of this is climbable. Yeah, there's some hidden areas that players can enjoy trying to find. And of course, tall areas like this, that if you climb up them, there's some special gathering points and stuff like that. Yeah, so for this game, we really feel that exploration and just movement in general, thanks to the mobility of the hunter and the wire bugs, is actually really enjoyable. Oh wow, so you can just dangle there, huh? Yeah, you can go from these tall heights. Even if you fall down, though, the hunter will be fine. Just watch. See? Totally fine. Well, to be fair, it's always been like that in Monster Hunter. Oh, so you can use the wire bugs while you're in the air as well? That's right. You can use a wire bug even after you're in the air already. Uh, you can sort of chain them together. Yeah, so you can stop like this in the air and just sort of like take a moment to decide which direction you want to go before you do the action. So once you get really used to it, you'll really be able to move pretty much any way that you want to, of course, keeping in mind the gauges that you have for the wire bugs. So when you're hanging like that, is there a limit to how many seconds you can do that? Yeah, that's right. There is a set amount of time. If you notice when you do the wire bug and you're stationary, you'll do some swinging motions. Uh, you can stay up on the wire bug as long as you're still swinging. So once you lose that momentum, then your hunter will fall down. I see. So it's a little bit just more by natural feeling. You'll know how long you can be in the air. Yeah. Yeah, so we've spent quite a bit of time up here, so let's go down uh, the slope here. I know you were trying to go down there earlier, but uh, let's go show off the rest of this map. Just a translator note, I think they're just laughing here because they haven't shown off the longsword at all, which was kind of the point of this entire uh, presentation, which they haven't done, so. Okay, let's go. <laughs> okay, so I think we'll stop here. This is the main area of the map, and we'll have Mr. Mori show off some actions here. So previously I showed that you can use the action slider to ride on your Palamute, but if you're close to them, you can just hold down the A button and you can ride on them as well. So movement is completely free uh, and up to the player, they can move however they want. And if you notice, you can also use some items, like uh, some potions and stuff like that. Yeah, so this opens the door to a lot of different things. For example, if you're on your Palamute and you're running away from a monster, you can use that opportunity to also heal up or to sharpen your weapon. 
Yeah, this is really nice. It's a, it's really convenient and really so helps sort of shorten up the time that you need to do these actions. So for items that you can use while you're on the Palamute, is it just any consumable, like potions or seeds as well? Yeah, you can use those as well. Yeah, so if you look at the size of the map, which is on the left-hand side here, you see that it's actually really big, so being able to ride on your Palamute and get through areas faster is quite convenient. Yeah, so we have a nice balance. You have these nice large open areas that the Palamute can be really good for running through really fast, or you can just go over these cliffs and stuff using the Hunter and the wire bugs. Um, it's not quite a shortcut, but it's, it works sort of like that. And don't worry, even if you go up and you climb over cliffs, the Palamute will automatically uh, join right behind you. So if you notice that bird over there with the extract uh, in its body, if you go over to it, it will come near you and then it will give you a buff to your hunter's statuses. So these will buff your status until the end of the quest, stuff like increasing your health or your stamina bar, uh, your attack or your defense. Yeah, if you paid attention when you grabbed that last one, it actually took the stamina bar and increased it a little bit. Yeah, so this, if you saw the shield mark, this increased my defense. Uh, so you can really think about the type of items and gathering spots that you want to hit on your route to get to the monster. We have things like this, it's just kind of like an RPG element to the game. Yeah, so the one that I just got, the green one, uh, that was increasing my overall health. Yeah, so if you notice we have buildings and structures in the actual map, uh, this is a little bit similar to some of the stuff you may have saw in something like Monster Hunter Portable 3rd. Um, but we want to have sort of, you know, this is the old shrine area, so we have these new structures that are kind of, you know, integrated into the map itself. Yeah, so the shrine map is interesting because it's kind of a mix of this, you know, grand nature, but also these man-made structures, so it shows how they're, they're integrated. <laughs> yeah, if you notice, there's a lot of moss that's growing all over the structures here. Actually, can you go back? I want to see show something with the Palamute. Uh, look at its mouth. Yeah, so the Palamutes have their weapon in their mouths, and this is what they use to attack other monsters. Wow, yeah, my jaw just dropped. You know, not, not the dogs, but my mouth. Like, I'm just in awe seeing all these new features. Yeah, it's just, we're just trying to take all this in. Uh, let's look at the scenery a little bit more. This is really nice. Yeah, you can really feel and almost smell the green in this map. Yeah, I really like it here. I, I don't want to go back. <laughs> okay, we've spent enough time here. Uh, why don't we get going? <laughs> See, I told you there was moss all over everything. Yeah, so let's go find Tetranodon and we'll show off some action. Yeah, after all, we have the game designer, Mr. Mori, here, and so we have him show off some stuff. Oh, these Palamutes are really fast if you dash. Yeah, if you look at the upper right hand side of the screen, you'll see the monster icons. Uh, we've done all these icons with this sort of uh, ink brush style for this game. What the heck was that? It was like a big clump of moss. 
<laughs> he's so fast. <laughs> no, I always think that. Like, monsters are really fast when they leave the area. Yeah, I mean, come on. They're, they're desperate as well. Yeah, they don't want to give off spoilers of stuff in the game. <laughs> There he is. <laughs> run away! What do, you, what do you mean, run away? We just found him. Yeah, so this is the long sword. Yeah, so in this hunt, I want to show you guys off some of the special skills that you can do with the long sword in conjunction with the wire bugs. Yeah, so specifically there's two skills that I want to show off. Translator note, they're just giving you the Japanese term for what these wire attacks are. So here I'm showing off one of the skills you can do with the wire bug. Your hunter propels themselves forward and kicks off the monster and does a very powerful downward strike. Here's what happens if you whiff. Uh, that was probably not a very good demonstration. <laughs> Don't worry about it, we got plenty of time to show it off again. So if you notice on the bottom of the screen, there's a gauge that sort of replenishes after you use a wire bug to do an action. We actually have the recharge rates set differently depending on the action that you do. For example, if you use a bug to do a movement, it uses up a certain amount of gauge. If you do sort of a skill, which we just showed, the recharge rate for that is also set separately. So this is just an additional element that's going to be different depending on the skills and also the weapon type that you're using. Yeah, so while your bug uh, consumption for skills is going to be quite different for each weapon, so do look forward to trying them all out. Oh, oh, I see. You, you failed on the skill and you got trapped by the monster. Oh, I see. That's another way that you can use the wire bugs. That's right. In this game, we have not just attacks, but we also have specific skills that you can do uh, when that are passive, like when you take damage. Uh, hang on, let me try to show this off again. Yeah, so if you have an available wire bug that you can use, uh, for example, if you get knocked down on the ground, you can use it to escape really fast. So you really have to consider how you want to use them. Do you want to use up all your wire bugs to do attacks, or do you want to save some of them for additional mobility? So paying attention to how much gauge you have left is actually really smart, because there's cases like you just saw where you take damage, and you're going to want to use them to get out of a pinch. So this is a new skill that in Japanese we're calling the water guard. Uh, basically, you activate the skill, and then if you get hit, it activates the effect. So it's kind of like a counterattack. Yeah, so it's not really a counter for you as the hunter, but you put up this wire bug sort of fence, and if the, that gets hit, then you perform a counterattack. Yeah, so this is a really important and crucial move, so if you notice, it took two wire bugs in order to perform that technique. So there's one other uh, wire bug skill that I want to show you, and um, Maki, I think you play Monster World, so you should be familiar with this one. Right. <laughs> 
Yeah, so I was showing the helm splitter, uh, although it was a little hard to tell. So if you activate that special wire bug skill and you jump up on the monster, you'll vault yourself into the air and do that special move. Yeah, so hopefully that helps illustrate how the wire bugs are used not only for movement, uh, but are really integrated into the core combat of this game and really adds a lot of variation uh, of different strategies that you can take for each weapon. Yeah, we're working really hard to make sure that the balancing is done really well, so we hope you look forward to this when it's ready. <laughs> He's got a large rock in his hand. <laughs> yeah, he, he was throwing it at the Palamute. <laughs> yeah, so this monster is special is that when its body is large, it uh, becomes slower but much more powerful and will do all these new types of attacks to utilize that power. Oh wow, if you look around its mouth, it seems like you've broken off quite a few parts. Yeah, I feel bad for the monster, but you know, we had to demo some moves off, right? Oh, I wish you could show me some more. That was really cool. There's such a variety of moves and strategies that the time attack players are going to go absolutely crazy with this stuff, aren't they? Okay, and then they had some more talk show and stuff like that. I'm not going to translate all that. So I hope you enjoyed being able to see this additional gameplay with sort of a vocal track of what they're saying because uh, it is quite funny. They're doing a lot of banter. Uh, there's a comedian there as well. So a lot of it is them just joking around and poking at each other. But I think it was really interesting hearing from one of the game designers sort of walk us through and show us more than even the previous demonstration about just how much variation there is with wire bugs and the attacks and the maneuverability that you can do with them and just the differences uh, between each weapon. I think we're going to see obviously different recharge rates. Maybe some weapons are going to be able to utilize uh, quicker, faster, more frequently. Uh, wire bug attacks, maybe some are more heavier that you can't use as often. I don't know. Uh, we'll have to find out. Anyways, this video was really just to give you guys a translated version of this. So uh, I'll work on a much larger analysis and sort of uh, thoughts video that I hope you look forward to as well. Quick shout out to all of you guys. Thank you for 300,000 subscribers on the channel. Uh, that was a milestone that we hit yesterday, which is crazy. Uh, and thank you so much for your support. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and until next time, happy hunting.